I'm wasting your goddamn footage here. <clears throat> Ladies and germs. Okay. I'm gonna test you this time. You should know after last week. What episode is this, Al? Two fifty three? Two? Two fifty two. Episode two five two. Okay. Hello, welcome back. Today's gonna be the episode under 10 minutes, Al. Huh? Got my goddamn notes. Okay. How to win in a climbing real estate market. His title's number one. Buying in this elevated, elevating market. That's title number two. I'm gonna let you pick. Today, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven points. What you need to think about in structuring your way in, Al. Just weaving, bobbing and weaving in. Getting in, flying through, ducking, weaving. Getting into the goddamn market. So. We're not going to talk about if you have something to sell today, second time, fourth time buyers. Where am I looking here? You all notice this. This is a this is an owl screw up here. Lost the puff. Unbelievable. There are a variety of things we can do to try and solidify our position as successful buyer in the current climbing market. Seven points. Now, uh, on all aspects of your offer, you can manipulate to benefit the seller while staying protected naturally. But um, today we're gonna dive into each of those. Now, again, first time buyer, fourth time buyer, we're not gonna get into the selling side uh, if that's tied to your next purchase. But today we're just gonna deal with the buying side. So we're gonna start, some of this may be very obvious. It's obviously been discussed 15 and a half million times before, but I haven't done it in a while. And today we're on the coffee couch, and this is the last place Ben made an appearance on the uh, on the video. Now that I think of it, and we may not even have been in here since he made an appearance on the video. Now that I think of it, Al, um, we're gonna start with financing. So obviously be pre-approved. You can actually get pre-approval letters, commitment letters from your mortgage broker or specialist to physically have to prove that you are pre-approved. Because a lot of the stuff out here, yeah, my buyers can buy it, they're pre-approved, we're not wasting anyone's time, we're here in a listing that we're looking at that we can actually afford and may potentially want. Obviously goes without saying as in, and is assumed and there's a lot of just verbal trust. But that's all fluff. When it comes to the actual offer and if you're in multiples, we need cold, hard facts, Al. The other agent wants to know what the hell's going on and he wants reinforcing data. So we can get a pre-approval letter, commitment letter from your mortgage specialist to show that you're applicable to the purchase amount that you're writing down on a piece of paper to offer on their property. So another peace of mind for the seller. Point number one. Point number two, uh, always have your deposit ready. If you're going into multiple offers, uh, if you are subject free, which we're gonna discuss shortly, have the deposit with you. Uh, copy of deposit sent with offer. So that's just something that no one needs to worry about. The deposit's there, it's committed to, and it's good to go. Now, one other step that you can go that offers a slight I mean, an inch layer of risk is uh, non-refundable deposits directly to the seller's names. You've heard of that one before. So typically, I work with Oakland Realty. You're my buyer, Al. We go and buy a place. Even though you didn't use me, I'm gonna just put that on, on camera right now. You didn't know me then, so that's fine. Clearly, you would use me now. <laughs> <laughs> that you're gonna write your deposit check to Oakland Realty LTD and Trust gets held in third party trust in my brokerage account. You can write the check directly to Mr. and Mrs. Seanigan and it goes directly into their personal account. Now, if you do this, it's one layer of clarification. Oh, this offer, we get money. I get it in my account today. If you do this, you better not walk away because you are essentially not getting that deposit back. You can try and sue and blah, blah, blah. So I don't know the legalities if you actually may have a chance at getting the deposit back, but if we're gonna do something like this, we need to know that this is a check for you, Mr. Seller, directly, and it's going directly in your bank account, so I'm giving you that level of peace of mind that I'm not gonna walk away in my brand new, shiny new rescission period. Uh, I'm actually gonna move forward. So just another layer of commitment, uh, another peace of mind for the seller. 
with an inch of risk to you. Subjects, get comfortable without them. There's plenty of time now to pre-subject the property. What does that mean? Uh, if there's, if you're dealing with a good listing agent, which of course they all are, they're gonna have pre, let's talk, if we're talking about strata, this is really only applicable, this part, subject to strata documents, they'll have pre-purchased the documents and have them to send to you on offhand. So during, let's say, the week that they're on the market before they're looking at offers, uh, you can comb through those minutes. Two years a minute shouldn't take you more than an hour if you don't know what you're doing, two hours, relay back and forth with your agent. Are there any red flags? If there are, blah, 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 you can go through the time. Use the rest of the week to uh, speak to whoever you need to to try and clarify that. Pre-inspect, pre-inspect the home. Book a day, pay your 800 bucks, get the inspection done beforehand so you know. So you can alleviate the documents subject, you can alleviate the inspection subject, and then run everything through your broker, give them form B, give them the, the docs, whatever they need, give them the MLS, your agent will do all this. Uh, get all the pre-qualifying details to the broker so they can give you as strong of a thumbs up as they can based on this isolated and specific property. Are we comfortable lending you the million bucks or whatever it is? So you can alleviate all these subjects. A lot of times when people think, oh, the realtor's making me remove subjects, the realtor's not got my best interest at hand. The market's gonna move along with or without you. So the realtor is, while going through these things ahead of time, got your best interest at hand, uh, but giving you the best bet to the house. The subject is access to information, remember. You're pre-qualifying information. So if you can do that before you offer, it's the exact same thing as if you do it after you offer. So give yourself a head start, do it all before. A letter. Al, this is always an interesting one. You can write a personalized letter. Did you do this when you bought? Did you buy in multiples or anything or was it normal market? It was normal. It was before. Lucky man, Al, oh, lucky man. So you can write a letter to the seller. Ah, oh, Jim and Jane, we need this home. I grew up three blocks away. My kids play soccer in the field two blocks down. Here's a family photo of us at Christmas. The dog down there, Chip, big Chip, he's since died. It's really tough on the kids. We just want them in a familiar area. Grandparents are three blocks away. Went to elementary school down in Kitchener. I need to be back near my roots. I want my kids to go to the elementary school. All the bullshit should be included in the letter. Family photo, always a perfect add-on just to pull those heartstrings out, just pluck away at them. Some sellers will give two shits and others will eat it up. You would be surprised. I've won many a multiples with the letter on its own, Al. That's a letter, very important. Dates, give the sellers the dates they want. If you're dealing with a tenancy or you're dealing with your sale, work whatever you have to on the back end to give your seller the dates they want. Make the process as easy as we can for them. Remember, I was gonna save this for the end, but in the current market climate, and when the market is elevated, as we've seen it so many times, your need to get into the market is substantially stronger than your seller's need to get out of the market. As much as you hate the market, blame whoever or whatever for it being so elevated, blame the government, blame realtors, blame immigration, blame whatever the hell you want. At the end of the day, if you're trying to enter, you are entering the market that someone is already in. They hold the cards. So you need to make this as cohesive to their desires, demands, their just internal need, Al, to get what they want. As painful as that may be. And just think, once you go to sell, you're on the other end. Now you're the king of the castle and you can tell people, get out of here, get out of here, get this crap out of here. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. You know what I'm saying? Get um, so yeah, dates, give it to them. Tenanted properties, a huge pain in the ass. Um, Typically speaking, if you can get away with getting the property vacant, do so, so you simply don't have to deal with it. If you wanna make your offer that much more appealing, quick caveat, your financing is okay with this. 
sometimes it's different. There's windows of your details in your financing. If you're buying an investment property, a principal residence, when do you take possession? Uh, are you taking vacant possession? Are you taking tenanted possession? Are you having to give that two calendar month notice yourself? Is it longer? Speak to your mortgage broker or mortgage specialist before. But if you're in a position, you may want to think about taking the tenants. You can give the sellers a quicker close. They can be gone. They don't have to go through the walkthrough. I know you don't want to go through the walkthrough of some random set of tenants that you're kicking out. They don't know you. You don't know them. You're the enemy. You're kicking them out of their warm home where they have their Christmases and their family dinners. You're the prick. But this in the eyes always remember of the seller those big blue eyes that we're trying to look appealing in front of this will be a lot of weight and bs off of their plate so this is a little bit above and beyond i would say similar level inch of risk to the uh deposit directly to the sellers but you can understand how this will make your offer look a lot more appealing they'll be able to get their money faster and everyone gets to move on. Don't forget to tell your realtor, the realtor should know this obviously, but always remember to write in that the damage deposit, there may be a pet deposit, uh, gets moved over to you via the statement of adjustments. Okay, we don't wanna forget that. No one wants to pay a damage deposit out that they didn't receive themselves. And you don't wanna chase the seller for anything else because he's gotten his money, he or she, be careful these days, has gotten his money, her money, their money, and ran. Uh, last but not least, other st offer structure. Slouching, you should've told me I was slouching. Oh, it's not gonna come across well. Like a damn slob over here. Always, if you're going into multiple offers, always, always, I need zooms on this Al, every always, 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 always. Now zoom out. Put your best number first. Don't assume, hope, wish that they're gonna come back and say, you're in the top two. You wanna come and renegotiate? Yo, I just had got done feeding my chickens, watering them and stuff. It's a waste of time, it's risky, and why leave it up to them? Give your best number first round. You're in multiples, give your best number. Don't take any risks, it's a waste of time. You don't wanna hope that they're gonna come back and ask you to revise higher play that game. If they do, no, we're already at our top. We're fine, we're done. Clean, easy. Because you never know, they could be bluffing. Not the realtors, Lyle. But we may bluff from time to time. And so, the offers are really close. Want to come up? Then you're just competing against yourself and you're never going to know otherwise. Not the realtors lie, but some gray areas from time to time. These circumstances get stressful. So, first number is your best number always when you're competing is number one. Number two, how do you pick that best number? This is my rule of thumb, Al. Listen carefully because when we, you and I work together to get your next place and we're in multiples, this is exactly what I'm gonna tell you. When picking a number, if you would be happy with the property selling to someone else for $1,000 more than what you paid, then that's your top number. So if you're like a million thirty-two, if it goes for a million thirty-three, too much, I'm happy. A million thirty-two is your number, okay? Is that clear? That's how you have to structure your number. That's how you have to deliver your number. The number is of excess importance here because all the other fluff I talked about is all secondary to the number. Sometimes dates is very important, but everyone always wants the number, okay? And then I'm gonna revisit this. In the current climate or in a climbing market, you need to get into the market more than the seller needs to get out. Let that sink in, okay? That's it. How long? Just under 15. Ooh! That's it, Al. I'm gonna let you pick the title this week. It needs to be a little bit more wordy. I need some more SEO. We need to talk about that too, actually. Right. That was 252. Yep. 252 in the books, thank you. I didn't send you my picture. This is gonna go in. This is life changing here. The wife is not impressed. Okay, feast your eyes on this, Al. Well, I need office headlights too. It just gets better and better out there. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. I'm blessed. It is what it is. See you at 253.